to a degree than where, where we've come from. And because the history of man, the history of the world is, is if you think about it, is full of, it has been historically uh, conflict. I mean, among one another. Yeah, you ever notice that? And, and I want to be able to sit there and say that the whole purpose of Christianity, the whole purpose of Yeshua coming into our life is because we needed a savior. We need a savior uh, to be part of our life because if we go by the lives that we live, a lot of us, I mean, I'm, <laughs> I think a lot of you think about it. We look at us and our life uh, sometimes it can be downright, downright depressive. When we sit there and put anything before God, and look at this, I was going to talk to somebody the other day, it was about the, the Ten Commandments, and I was only focusing on the, the first four. I'm more focused on what I'm saying. God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord that God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. You see, God is even showing to the children of Israel, I'm bringing you out of the house of bondage. God has brought us out of the, the, the wages of sin, which is death, or the bondage of sin. He has brought us out as well through Yeshua. And so those people that sit there and still have this racial divide and understanding is whatever, the, I don't know what the problem was or is, but you need to understand that those who receive Christ have been been delivered out of the house of bondage. You understand that? We've been delivered out of the house of bondage. Let me make sure I'm going to break that up, take it off for a second. All those who receive Christ, they have this color complexion or darker or a little lighter. We've been delivered from the house of bondage. We've been called the children of God. And therefore, I don't know if you understand that, we are now children of God regardless of the color of our skin. You don't worry about the color of skin. Some people are still stuck up on that. And they want to sit there and they have this hate and they've been taught this hate for generations and generations. God said, listen. I delivered them, I delivered you. You didn't deliver yourself, whether you're white or black or brown or whatever, you didn't deliver yourself. I delivered you, said the Lord. God has redeemed all of us from the curse of the law, so why would any of us want to still bring curse on one another? It just doesn't add up. It's a bit We've been, some of us have been taught generation to generation to hate somebody just for the color of the skin. I don't care whether you're black or white, because that's what happened. And, and, and you don't understand that he who hates a murderer and no murderer has eternal life or God is in him. This is a spiritual thing. Your life, your spiritual life is at hand. Read the word for yourself. Somebody, whatever this instinct is to do the king, it's almost like there's an instinct within us to have the, 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 the nature of Cain in us. Cain slew his brother. The first man born slew his brother. How many of us are going to sit there and live our life living like Cain and still saying Jesus is Lord? There's a contradiction here. The Bible called Cain a wicked. If you sit there and kill somebody just for because of their political party, just because of their skin, based on the fact that their wealth was assessed, that's a Cain nature. And the Bible called them wicked. Why would you want, I mean, if, if you feel, if you think that life is just here, if you think that when you die it's over with, well, you know what? I don't think that way because the Bible doesn't say that. And even if you are uh, atheist, you got to sit there and say, is this, uh, what proof that I have other than the fact that the bones are in the grave, that my conscience, my soul, 
So I'm saying, I don't, some people say they don't have a soul. What makes you who you are? Because you're not an animal. And even animals have, there's some good animals and bad animals. There's some people, animals we love. I mean, some of us, I've known that you, we had animals that we love. We love because of their personality, because of their, their, their loving to us. They gave us so much love. And to think that it just ends there. For us as people, made an image of God. I know somebody said, well, that's what the Bible said. That's what the Bible says. And that's what I believe in. But the point is that Cain, the nature of evil, is, 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 is when we sit there and, and don't even accept the deliverance that God has given each human being that chooses to come his way, to come to him. So as I go back to reading this again, <laughs> I want you to understand, if God delivered us, and what I like in Romans, it says, God before us, who could be against us? Because vengeance is the Lord. He will repay. Don't set yourself up. Verse 2, I am the Lord thy God, which has brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. No other gods. Meaning, don't bring, you, you can't even bring the color of your skin before him. You can't bring your political party before him. You can't even bring the person that you think is better above the law before him. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Now, someone sit there and say, I don't know why. I, let me come off for a second. I don't know why people, they, they, they get down involved with this uh, murder piece from abortion, which, is, which I don't like. I don't like abortion. But the fact is that some of you translate that to being a murder opposed to the fact is that right now it's legal, but you say, well, it's murder. Okay, it's murder. Then you should hate all types of murder, shouldn't you? That's the whole point, right? You know, I don't want to have the cage spirit of being a murderer. But if we hate, then that's, that's, that's murder. And there's no eternal life in it either, right? I just want to put that down there. Make sure that don't just... Focus on one aspect of murder. Focus on the fact that hate is a spiritual murder. And God say he who hates his brethren is a murderer and there's no eternal life abides in him. Get that, understand that. And then we're talking about, he said in this scripture right here, if we're gonna go by the commandment, they're gonna say, the commandment said thou shalt not murder. Okay, so you have a high ground on a position. But it also said, don't commit adultery. But more important than that is these commandments in the beginning with the relationship of us with God. And the image, and he said, thou shalt not make any image. I'm coming, I'm going back on it now to the scriptures. You can write the scripture more than anything else. Because I'm trying to sit there and say, why would anybody go and violate this law? And nobody said nothing about it. He said, look at this now. Look at this very clear because some people have been sold a bill of goods. <laughs> he said, Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Now, I know we found the fact that Christ walked this world to be the living sacrifice, to be that sacrifice for us. But if you, all of you notice, all of you, there is no description of Christ until you get to the book of Revelation. And yet people have made images of he who is in heaven. Could we, don't we sit there and say the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, these three are one? And yet we don't sit there and recognize the fact is that we have, people have, have, have paintings all over this world. And then they have the audacity. You got people who painted Christ 
as a European. And you know, he was not a European. Excuse me. This makes me get that. I, I'm not even trying to offend you, but he was not a European. Make sure you get it. You, you understand. Historically, he came from a region in Northern Africa, right? He, he's not a European. And yet, what, what do we see? Why would you paint a picture? You already been told not to make an image, and then you're going to make an image with the picture. And I'm talking about saying black people too. They said, "Damn, well, I want to paint a picture of an Af as an African, even though he may come from North Africa or what? Because that is the Middle East is Africa too, right? It's not Asia; it is Africa. But the point is this: the going back to the scriptures, why paint? something that makes you feel comfortable for looking like you when it's not about the outward appearance in the first place that's all i'm trying to say it's a god looks at the heart of man and and we need to look at the heart of each other and we don't need to sit there and sit there and say we're gonna call ourselves we're gonna paint our savior to look like ourselves so that we can sit there and feel good about ourselves when we need to feel good about our spirit because it's, it's the problem of our is People put the painting and make it look like themselves, but then they go and do atrocities and hurt people, kill people, slaughter people, massacre people. What are you black and white? Because it happens you you wander as far as blacks into some other places. We know what happened in the South or in this country, massacres and all that other stuff. The spirit of Cain. We should focus on the spirit of Christ, the love. But we, the people, sit there and just forget about the, this, this, this concept of what he said. Christ, he said in verse four, "Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in that was under the earth." So he's trying to say, don't be making an image of the devil. <laughs> don't be making an image of God. <laughs> don't make an image of the Godhead because they didn't give it to you. But if you, if you want to get a description, if you want to do it, do it based on what the Bible says in Revelation. There's a revelation of the scripture of God sitting on the throne. You don't get, you don't get the facial features, but you get the, the what he, he, at least how John says he looks like. But no, we're going to sit there and we're going to make a person look like an African or we'll make a person look like a European instead of making them look like within the region it came from. But the bottom line is the complexion of the skin, he, he, he said it doesn't matter. And you know, Romans said, my flesh dwells no good things. So why even deal with the, the flesh? Why even try to glorify the flesh in the first place? The Bible says in Romans, in my flesh dwells no good thing. So why would we even try to even elevate that we're doing that we've been mindful man says mindful god you know also in verse five thou should not bow down thyself to them no image when you sit there and you say when, when somebody says superior that mean what do you want to bow down to to somebody based on their superiority when we got to sit there by, go by the laws of god which is that thou should not bow down thyself to them nor serve them for I am the Lord that God, I'm a jealous God because he provided all my needs. And we, I can't, my flesh doesn't provide all my needs. The color of my flesh, whether it's black or white, does not provide my needs. I don't move and breathe because of my flesh or the color of my flesh or my political party. I move and breathe because of him. And he's trying to tell you, why would you do that? He said, I'm a jealous God. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation unto them that hate me. And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Think about that. That's I like that part, man. <laughs> I don't know about you. He said, first, I like the part about the fact is that showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Wow. That's that's powerful by itself, huh? But the other part is that those who hate him. He shows that he said the iniquity of the father upon the children of the third and fourth generation unto them that hate him. 
I don't know about you. I think I rather love him, keep his commandments, unless he called me to put on a badge and be the enforcers of the laws of the Ten Commandments or the laws of this land. But if you're not called to be the enforcer of the law, maybe it's better to be preached the good news, the gospel, and believe what God can do. What do you think? I think it's better to do what you're called to do opposed to showing hate and anger, bowing down, going by lies, and sitting there believing that that's more important than doing what God tells you to do. What's more important? I said the important thing is do what God tells you to do. Love people because that's his commandment, you know? He gave us 10 commandments. And then we sitting there, we said that Christ is our Lord and Savior. Why don't we do what Christ tells us to do, right? Do what Christ tells you to do. Jesus says right here in John 14, 15, if you love me, what? Listen to this. If you love me, keep my commandments. If you love me, keep my commandments. And then I will pray to the Father, he should give you another comforter that he may abide with you, what, forever. Even the spirit of truth in the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. We sit there and I go operate in fear and hate and all that other junk and understand it. Just love him and keep his commandments. We sit there and we want to go by the Ten Commandments. Christ gave us a commandment. Look at that commandment he gave us. And some of you still want to go back to the law and then show your ugliness and hate. We told you, if you love one another, keep his commandments. Look at this. A new commandment. This is John 13, 31. Therefore, when I was going out, therefore, when he was going out, Jesus said, now is the son of man glorified and God is glorified in him. If God be glorified in him, God shall also glorify him in himself and shall straightway glorify him. Little children, yet a little while I am with you. You shall seek me. And as I have said unto the Jews, whether I go, you cannot come. So now I say to you, a new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, by this shall all men know that you are a disciple if you have love for one another. That's the new commandment. And that's what we need to sit there and understand. Let's not have the Cain spirit. Let's have Christ, the Holy Spirit. Let's bear the fruits of the Spirit. It's found in Galatians 5, 22 to 23. Now the fruits of the Spirit, we're talking about the Holy Spirit, is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, and such. There is no law. Let's work on that. Let's do those things that are separate and proven not. Let us do what is our reasonable service instead of focusing on what we think is man's reasonable service. Let's stop trying to be law enforcers. But if you get angry, you get evil because you've been forcing something you were not called to do. Do you think God did not take care of that? If God put, if, if, the, if we were to go by the laws, we know in this country, this country is not, there's no established church in this country. So we can't sit there and say that the Ten Commandments, we may derive our laws, but we got all kinds of laws, right? But it's, it's God's laws goes for God's people. And then if you're a Christian, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. And then if you're, in the, if you're in the world, you're not even subject to the laws of God. I told a man, brother, the other day, he sat there and, and got all deep. He got all deep, let me show you this. <laughs> this is the, uh, in the Esau, my, my electronic Bible. I told the, uh, the young man, 
it was uh let me here let me bring this up this was in the in the scriptures i thought it was I thought it was interesting to bring to to the young man let me bring it up here this is in romans go to romans 8 because some people get some people want to be law enforcers and believe that everybody going to follow the law but if you look at it he said in verse 6 he said for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritual minded is life and peace because, because, listen to this, because the cognitive mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, so then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Now, maybe we miss something there, maybe you're missing something there, but it says that those are, what we will read again. He said, verse 7, because the cognitive mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be, neither indeed can be. So they of the flesh cannot please God. So if you're in the flesh, if you're the people that want to sit there and hate people because of the color of their skin, what are you, black or white? So you, you focus on the flesh. And he said, you're not subject to the law of God either, because you already got condemnation already. And you, you'll find that when you get to, when you step on the other side. Because what is, is what, what worth it? What profit a man to glorify his flesh and lose his soul? What profit? It doesn't profit anything. So I'm going to leave that with you. Uh, and I hope you enjoy this, this, the, uh, this recording, because I want to make sure we get this understanding. If we love him, keep our, keep his commandment. Let's not be a cane. No, let's not have a cane spirit, but have a loving spirit, a Christ spirit, the Holy Spirit. Bear the fruits of the Spirit. Love one another because he loved us. And he loved us first. And he gave us life. God gave the life of his son for us to learn to love one another. Because we're not going to destroy ourselves. And right now we have the ability to do it. Those nuclear weapons, if, if you know, you got a country right now willing to commit suicide for the whole world out of selfishness, out of evilness. They're sitting there right now tearing down the building that they blew up. Bodies are in them, they don't even care. That's 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 evil. That's outright no kidding evil. And you think we have grown past it, we haven't. So think about it, pray about it, focus on him, please him, not man. And you'll find out Christ is Lord, amen? All right, God bless you. And I appreciate you taking the time to listen to the, the study. And, and I, I recorded it pre-recorded so I can edit it and try to I'm trying to bring the segments that you can digest. Amen. God bless you. And I appreciate your time and we'll see you when we see you. Amen. Stay blessed. God bless. Bye -bye.